Hello everyone. I am Ravi Gupta. I am founder and CEO of Elias Technology Media Private Limited. Thanks for joining us uh, today in this interesting uh, presentation. And this presentation is part of the Future Cities Virtual Conclave. And this uh, conclave is focusing on next generation citizen engagement platform. And uh, this conclave is being organized by ELETS in collaboration with e Governance Magazine and SAP. And uh, today with us, uh, we are joined by uh, Rene Roland. She is a specialist uh, in the uh, public sector space and uh, she uh, is. Uh, representing DXE Technology Australia. And uh, the topic of our presentation is that experience sharing on Christchurch City Council Citizen Engagement Project. So welcome, Rene. Uh, thanks for joining us. We are honored to have you with us. And uh, we are uh, live on the social media on Facebook and YouTube. So there are uh, lots of uh, viewers who are uh, watching to you. And I hope that uh, we are all going to learn a lot about citizen engagement from your presentation. Rene, welcome. Rene, uh, please unmute yourself. Uh, there we go. That'll help. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much for your introduction. Just bear with me one moment and I'm going sure. to share my no screen. Problem. Nice uh, picture, family oh, picture. Thank, <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Um, so I am uh, the Global Public Sector Offering Lead for DXC's SAP CX practice. So I'm, I'm responsible for creating solutions for our government customers that specifically solve their citizen engagement challenges. And I've been at DXC for five years. And for those of you that don't know who DXC are, we are an end-to-end -end IT services company. So we operate in over 70 countries and we focus on helping our customers differentiate through our industry-specific solutions. And we have partnerships with the world's leading technology companies, and that includes SAP. We have around 140 thousand consultants worldwide and have a very strong presence in, in India as well. Now, prior to my current role with offering development, I did play a key role in the delivery of Christchurch City Council's implementation um, of DXC and SAP's joint citizen engagement solution. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. So firstly, I'm going to start with just sharing, you, uh, sharing with you a video. Kia ora. that's the New Zealander way, to have life and be well. Christchurch embodies the very spirit of the greeting. It's a place where anything is possible, where adventure comes to life and well-being drives everything we do. It's about being connected with our friends, with our families, with our citizens. That's why we reached out to SAP, who partnered with DXC to create a citizen-centric platform to revolutionize and transform the way we engage with our citizens. During the recent and catastrophic earthquake, we saw firsthand the strains outdated systems put on the community. It spurred us to rethink and reimagine what was possible. We knew from existing issues with reporting things like graffiti, rubbish, potholes, noise violations, stray dogs and more that our citizens were tired with the lengthy and often complicated processes of raising requests, having issues resolved and providing feedback. So when we saw an opportunity to leverage the cloud and provide a tailored omni-channel service experience for our 380,000 citizens, we were all in. SAP and DXC went right to work, integrating SAP Commerce Cloud, Citizen Engagement Accelerator, and SAP Service Cloud to immediately transform the way we deliver 46 different services. SAP and DXC introduced a robust digital experience to enhance our citizen engagement. With innovative new tools such as Citizen Capture with real-time progress tracking, 
geospatial technologies and predictive analysis tools, we are now able to tackle requests faster and take proactive measures in high incident areas. And Business Insight literally skyrocketed overnight. Across the board, we went from a multiple touchpoint interaction to an end-to-end -end service system with single touchpoint and resolution often within hours, which made it easier for everyone to stay connected and showed our citizens that we are deeply committed to improving our responsiveness and collaboration in order to provide the best service experience. Service that connects Christchurch and our citizens. Kiora indeed. So just a little bit of a recap there on their visions and objectives. And so they did have a very clear vision and that was really to make it simpler for the citizens of Christchurch to interact with their council. And they knew they weren't going to be able to achieve that vision with their, with their existing technology platforms and processes. And that was because their existing request management system was end of life and it couldn't be enhanced any further and they had business processes that were complex and relied on significant manual interventions, and there was no centralised customer data management. So the key objectives of the initiative were to increase efficiency by automating those manual processes, reduce the amount of times the call centre has to call customers back um, by ensuring that there's sufficient and accurate data collected first time around, and provide more choice to citizens on, on how and when they interact uh, with the council, and that's regardless of their ability or their age, and be able to visualise trends to anticipate the needs of the city rather than always being very reactive. And so the scope of, uh, of the first phase of this uh, initiative was 46 different services, and those included things like water connections, waste removal, um, and graffiti removal. So a little bit about the solution. The first part of it was for the Citizen Engagement Accelerator uh, for a new digital interface. And, and this is the, the citizen face portal. It gives citizens the ability to log requests, raise issues, pay bills such as property, property tax, um, and more importantly, um, allows them to view the status of these requests online so they don't have to follow up with the call centre. So I'm just going to give you a very quick look at this solution. So as you can see, you've got the home page here and the citizen can quite easily see the apply button up the top. And clicking that, they can see a list of the services uh, that they want to uh, look at and we can see a water connection there. So clicking apply takes you straight into a form and there's some options there. So you can choose a residential or a commercial. And when you uh, choose a new connection, you can see on the right hand side how much that's going to be, but maybe it's uh, not a new connection, but something else. And that dynamically uh, changes the, the price there and then the citizen can hit next and, and go through a number of options to complete that form nice and easily. The next part of that of the solution was SAP Service Cloud for and this was for omnichannel request management and so this enhanced the customer service capabilities by giving that centralised view of interactions and that was regardless of the, the channel the citizen used or the request type. GIS integration, so there was integration with Esri Maps to both the citizen portal and request management platform. And this allows tickets to be pinned to a specific location um, and that helps with routing them to the correct business unit first time. For example, if someone's dumped some rubbish in a park, a citizen can easily select that, um, that spot with a pin on a map and send it to the council to, uh, so that it's handled and automatically routed through to the parks team because of its location data. Now, they had a very complex landscape and um, it wasn't going to be feasible to replace all of that in one go. And so as part of the phased migration approach, only their large volume services were migrated to the new platform in the first phase. Um, and that meant there were a number of integrations uh, required.
required with their legacy systems. And it was a joint DXC SAP program of work. So both organizations worked in partnership to deliver the full scope of the program. And the 46 services were transformed in just four months. Um, now, of course, if, uh, if there were a fewer number of services, the solution could certainly be implemented even sooner. So the council faced a, a user experience challenge with how to present their 46 services online. They didn't want to want um, their citizens to have to hunt around for the services that are applicable for them. So if you look back at the water connections uh, that I showed you before, they could have quite easily had multiple forms for every scenario, commercial, residential, brand new connections, additional connections to ex existing properties, etc. cetera. Um, but what's, what they were able to do is, is look at building a, a form with dynamic options so that everything can be grouped together in one simple, easy to find form. And then based on the options that are selected by the citizen, the form can be automatically routed through to the correct department. And, and this was really important for, for the forms that they had, um, which involved reporting issues, which was a, a number of, of their forms. Um, so things such as the dumped rubbish, they didn't want to have one form that is sent to the department responsible for uh, collecting the rubbish that's been dumped in the park and another form um, that uh, went to the people who removed it from a water, waterway. They wanted to be able to have one form and, and use automation. So because of this, they needed a highly configurable system and with the citizen engagement accelerator, the, the admin interface, it's really easy to use and the business users, after just a small amount of training, were able to go and create these them, themselves. So I'm just going to quickly show you uh, the different configurations that they could choose when, um, when configuring each of their services online. So they could... Uh, configure either a registered uh, user, so for the water connection example, or maybe just a guest user for the for the person who needs to re report an issue like that dumped rubbish, because we don't want to prevent people uh, from reporting these things um, because there's that barrier of being of of logging in and creating an account. And then you've got the different service options, and and they're the things like the residential and and uh, and commercial options that you that you saw in that little video. And then there's four form steps, and when you've got a, a range of services, um, you might just have a simple one-page form, or you could have a very complex form, and and want to want to do that in different form steps, and they can all be easily configured in in the admin. Some services might have shipping, maybe you're, uh, you're, you're posting out a physical copy of a birth certificate or a driver's license. So you need to be able to uh, configure a shipping address and maybe a shipping method as well. Payment details, some services required payment, some services didn't require payment. Um, you always want to be able to have that review page there to check the details are correct. And then, of course, there's, there's confirmation. Um, so, yeah, that, sh that shows you that you really can configure anything from a simple page form to a more complex uh, multi-step form. The digital channel was only part of the process transformation. And so this is an example of how their end-to-end -end services were were uh, previously and as you can as you can see there um there's lots of lots of steps lots of manual intervention they have um the citizen has to complete a, a form before an invoice is raised and there's multiple interactions before the contractor is is even able to um to get the request sent to them for fulfillment But uh, if you look at the new state, once the digital interface and the request management um, platform was, was introduced, it, it's a lot simpler. So a customer just goes online, makes that payment, and immediately um, the contractor is notified for fulfillment through an automated process. So there were some great results um, from, from this initiative. And the first one is the business insight. So um, they could absolutely visualise those, those trends, um, the geographical trends, and that allows them to better understand their citizens' needs. 
for field services staff. They no longer had to use paper books and return to the office to type up notes. They could log requests on, on the move. And processing times uh, reduced significantly. So things like the, the water connections or ordering a, a rubbish bin, uh, that process took up to, up to four weeks and that could just be fulfilled in, in days. When it came to service delivery, because they moved from analog to digital processes, they were able to streamline workflows, workflows, sorry, um, and that enabled staff to be able to concentrate on higher value tasks, and, and it really improved their IT efficiencies. And so, because citizens can interact easily with the council using the device and and channel with that they choose, that absolutely improved the citizen engagement and when you deliver better outcomes for citizens that builds trust and that promotes improved citizen participation. Now wasn't all smooth sailing um, there were definitely some lessons learned from from this project and uh, the first one was absolutely breaking down the silos. So in the beginning, each department was focused on their own processes and outcomes, and it became apparent that there was some unnecessary complexity being introduced into workflows, and, and there was a real risk of an inconsistent and overwhelming user experience. So this was identified and rectified, but we definitely learned that better upfront collaboration between the teams would have avoided this. And it, it was also important that UX um, is involved from, from day, day one and they have that full oversight on, on all processes so that the experience can be consistent and streamlined and enable the team. So, so the key stakeholders certainly understood the capabilities of the solutions being implemented, but a number of the project team hadn't been given that knowledge at the beginning. And um, when, when they spoke to us directly afterwards, they certainly felt that it would have been made, that they would have made um, better decisions in the design workshops had they had that knowledge up front. Um, and they were also really determined to use out of the box functionality and leverage um, leverage configurations uh, over customizations, um, in, unless of course it was really going to provide sufficient business value. And, and obviously as, as, as the specialists, we're help, there to help guide this process, but they had an internal service design team. Um, and so uh, for them, it would have been great for them to be able to understand the capabilities better, or perhaps have one of our consultants in the team that could help them um, make those processes easier. So uh, that's, that's the end of, of my presentation. So just wanted to thank you all for, uh, for listening and, uh, and over to, is it uh, Arkit who's going to, to take over? I'm not sure if there's any questions. So let me see if uh, we have any questions. There is a comment section. So Rene, there is one question uh, from uh, uh, Mumbai city of Maharashtra state. So question is from Mr. Desai. He's asking, how challenging is it to automate existing manual processes while implementing various digital innovations to modernize citizen engagement project? Can you please answer this question? How, ch how challenging is it? Um, look, I... I wouldn't say it's it's challenging. Um, however, uh, you should uh, you should you should absolutely be doing um, the the service design up, up front. Um, now um, that this particular uh, project, um, it uh, it was it was certainly. Um, their old processes were, were what was what was what was challenging, and it was um, uh, and it was um, uh, taking up a, a lot of a lot of their resources and and time. So um, by going through the process, and like like I said, it was just done in six six short months. Uh, they were able to to free up a, a lot of their staff and, and resources. Thank you, Rene. 
uh, now i uh, hand over the session to mr sudhakar p venkateshan he represents uh, sap india he is also there uh, with us in the panel sudhakar over to you uh, thanks a lot arpit uh, can you also bring uh, ravi into the front end uh, ravi chaturvedi yeah thanks a lot rene uh, for the excellent session oh you're welcome uh, thank you so much so Re i would request sudhakar to also uh, present a speaker certificate to rene uh, for joining us and sharing her valuable uh, insights and inputs uh, in today's uh, future cities virtual conclave so may i request my team at the back end sudhakar over to you yeah uh rene it's uh, absolutely a awful session uh, i think we have got a uh, great insights uh, about uh, project implementation at christchurch and uh, your efforts and how you have come across various challenges uh, it's great to hear this and we provide this e certificate to you for your this excellent uh, contribution rene thanks a lot thank you so much thank you rene yeah, yeah arpit can we bring uh, ravi also onto the front end if he is there on the back 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 end uh, shop technical team please uh, bring mr ravi on the front screen yes mr ravi is here okay let's do the yeah. wrap up session uh, uh, respected panel members speakers delegates and colleagues very good afternoon Uh, let me reintroduce myself uh, for those who have joined recently i am sudhakar p venkatesan industry business architect uh, dto team sap india uh, myself and dr ravi gupta will jointly do this summary and wrap up session uh, today we have got lot of insights actually uh, knowledgeable content and experience sharing uh, from our eminent speakers and the panelists uh, on this uh, citizen engagement right Uh, in today's event we have lot of delegates also on the board and before we get into the vote of thanks uh, we'll run a short survey using menti.com so that we can get a collective perspective on this topic citizen engagement so i'll request uh, ravi uh, my colleague who is uh, supporting this uh, entire uh, presentation along with me uh, to share yeah. the desk and we'll s s start the survey ravi yes so i am sharing my screen just let me know so visible now yeah it is visible now uh, yep. so i'll request uh, all the participants who are who are on this uh, uh, webinar now uh, to go to menti.com and uh, type the passcode 54540 can you please log on into menti.com and type the passcode 54540 there will be a slight uh, 15 seconds lag uh, so we'll wait for that so uh, people have already started putting uh, i think some of the uh, audience have already joined this menti.com so the question what we have here is what are the top two challenges that are normally faced by the urban local bodies and the smart cities to deliver citizen services efficiently uh, one of the examples what we have given is uh, citizen experience maybe people can start giving their ideas and on these top two challenges please keep on typing the challenges that are normally faced by ulbs please go ahead yeah passcode is 54540 please get into passcode 54540 yes <laughs> so once again i request all the delegates those who are watching us live on social media and in our platform please log on to menti.com that is m e n t i dot c o m menti.com and you will be asked for a passcode over there so you have to enter 54540 i repeat 54540 yeah we are already getting some of the uh, challenges uh, some are like uh, end to end process coverage yeah normally we see this as a challenge uh, uh, generally in the citizen uh, uh, engagement applications 
or the ulbis and smart cities uh, where we have silo based applications uh, that's what silo applications is meant about and uh, some other uh, members have also talked about end to end process coverage uh, some have spoken about the computer literacy uh, some have talked about uh, a communication gap yeah so uh, this is again connected back into the end to end process coverage there there should be a complete process without any communication backs uh, gaps whenever a request is raised the request should finally get into the uh, uh, get into uh, the complete process coverage till the uh, service to the particular citizen is completely available to him yeah somebody has spoken about uh, basic communities uh, some have talked about uh, lack of planning uh these are all very good inputs that we are getting uh, we'll we'll wait for another 10 15 seconds and see if we are getting some more inputs uh, excellent inputs from the participants what we are getting uh, on this challenges faced by uh, the uh, ulbs and smart cities uh, in delivering citizen services efficiently yeah let's let's uh, wait for one more minute and see because there is a slight time lag let's let's wait for that and see i hope uh, uh, audience are able to see this uh, challenges whatever we have already got on the screen absolutely uh, so the most important challenge uh, what we have come across based upon the uh, number of responses that we have got is one on the communication gap and second is on the silo applications exactly that's what we are uh, completely talking about uh, Uh, we are talking about uh, the comprehensive application uh, process flow end to end covering the process uh, from the stage uh, i submit an application into the system and i got a complete response uh, that is what is uh, that, that that is what is uh, normally uh, required uh, in case of these kind of uh, ulbs and smart cities to have a comprehensive and a full proof citizen engagement application uh, ex ex excellent uh, inputs i am also seeing this in my other uh, monitor where i get a bigger view of this yeah uh ravi i think uh, we have got a lot of uh, inputs uh, more than uh, 100 responses we have got uh, on to this yeah uh, we can move on to the uh, next uh, question i think still still uh, we are getting more and more challenges uh, better we'll get more and more we'll have more idea and uh, we can we can cover these points uh, maybe in subsequent discussions with the uh, uh, speakers panelists whoever uh, we have met today and we can elaborate on these uh, points and how we can come across a full proof citizen engagement platform uh, which can overcome all these challenges that's where we are trying to attempt to get these challenges uh, from the participants uh, i think we have got an excellent response uh, uh, from the participants uh, we have got very good uh, uh, feedback now uh i think ravi we can move on to the uh, next question probably yeah, sure yeah question 2 is uh, we have identified what are all the various challenges uh, generally faced by ulbs and uh, uh, smart cities uh, in providing a comprehensive citizen engagement platform right second is what would be your suggestions or recommendations to overcome these challenges if you had noticed this we have already asked these kind of questions to our panelists earlier in our panel discussions now it is our turn to get the comprehensive view from the participants as well so that we'll have holistic view across the entire uh, audience who have attended this entire webinar so we'll get, we'll get a collective perspective now uh, now the participant can start uh, selecting can so start start selecting from one of the options given here uh, uh, what would be our suggestions or recommendations we have categorized those suggestions and recommendations into four uh, buckets uh, one is uh, bringing majority of the services online because we normally see in some of the ulbs uh, some services are made online where others are uh, kept uh, uh, on a physical mode so how do we bring majority of the services online uh, that is what the first option is second one is uh, uh, create a, a citizen engagement platform which is comprehensive common and end to end i think that is the second option what we have uh, projected here uh, third one is uh, improve online citizen services adoption by the citizen so how to improve the adoption by the citizen because that is one 
uh, important uh, uh, feature what we normally uh, look into uh, because many of the citizens might not be aware that these kind of services are aware aware available online so how to improve uh, the citizen adoption and last point is on the citizen feedback and corrective actions because we have to get uh, the uh, citizen feedback uh, on an appropriate time as and when we receive the services as and when they log on into the system whatever the challenge they face currently and how to bring in those uh, uh, grievances or feedback mechanism back into the system and provide a comprehensive and full full proof uh, citizen engagement platform that is the fourth option so uh, you can select the uh, suggestion or recommendation what you have in mind and then start uh, giving your inputs yeah so Thakar, there seems to be i think some issue the next slide is uh, as part of voting three it's not coming up okay Let's see. yeah now i think it should be available yeah so there is one uh, suggestion which has already come uh, create a common citizen engagement platform uh, there is also a suggestion on improve uh, online services. So we have got, we are getting more voting towards uh, create a common citizen engagement platform. Now the ranking is going up for this particular option, which is six. Uh, people have already voted for this. Uh, we'll await some more some more points, uh, some more uh, inputs. Now the voting for common citizen engagement platform has gone up to eight. And uh, we have one each for uh, majority of the services online. I think uh, we are getting more and more uh, inputs uh, from the participants now. Uh, we, uh, very appreciable uh, inputs we are getting. Uh, let's wait for some more some more uh, inputs to come uh, into this platform, and let's have a comprehensive view because this provides us more inputs, not only to us but also to our panelists, to our speakers. Uh, what is most important? Uh, uh, uh recommendation to overcome the challenges which are commonly faced by the citizen engagement platform yeah so let's let's wait and let's see now the number of responses have gone up to 17. Uh, we have 13 uh, people who have responded more on the citizen engagement platform uh, numbers are going up uh, uh, we'll wait for uh, one more minute uh, probably to get uh, some more responses and inputs on this uh, Ravi, what we will do is at the end of this uh, uh, Minty, uh, you have to save this presentation, Ravi, so that that can be used by us for our uh, future references. Yeah. Uh, so don't sure. come out of this. Uh, uh, make the output. Uh, uh, we'll take this output and we have to save this output so that this can be used for our future uh, references and study purposes. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's uh, wait for uh, uh, ten or twenty more seconds uh, to see if we are getting some more pointers on this. Uh, we have yeah we have got uh, one more input uh, we have got uh, so what what uh, participants are recommending is that uh, uh, we will be uh, we'll have to have a common citizen engagement platform which is a comprehensive platform which meets uh, end to end requirements across so that's what i think uh, most of the participants are suggesting uh, we'll go ahead with this uh, ravi i think we can move on to the uh, third question now ravi yeah so the question number three is what are the features do you expect uh, from a next generation citizen engagement platform now people have already uh, recommended that uh, uh, it is better to have a common citizen engagement platform uh, to uh, have comprehensively come across the challenges whatever we are facing so uh, in the citizen engagement platform what will be your uh, recommendation so there are four options which are already pre presented here you can provide your inputs for the ranking uh, one is uh, uh, giving a omni channel uh, including social media when i say omni channel uh, the services should be available accessible anytime any device uh, anywhere so that is that is what we are talking about omni channel uh, second easy to configure because from the ulb side also whenever a new service comes into the picture uh, the uh, ulb should not face a difficulty in configuring those new services it should be on the fly configuration what should be available for those citizens so that 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 is a point what is normally uh, recommended for the from the ulb perspective third is a complete integration with the backend systems and 
uh, the, the citizen engagement platform should be connected to the backend systems like uh, uh, payments part or accounting part, uh, or it should also get connected to the uh, social media uh, perspective so that uh, the ULBs will be able to do the citizen engagement uh, activities comprehensively end to end. So that's what we are getting more voting on that angle. Uh, we are talking about a complete integration with backend systems uh, like payment accounting, etc. And uh, some options are coming for supporting the local language also because we face uh, this in commonly uh, across uh, rural areas. Uh, even though citizen services are available, if that is not available in the uh, local or regional language, then uh, the adoption from those kind of citizens uh, will be still a challenge. So that's where we are getting more and more votes for local language. So what we understand from this uh, response, uh, I think as of now, 18 uh, people have responded. Uh, so what what we are uh, what we are uh, seeing from this entire uh, response is we need to uh, have the comprehensive citizen engagement platform, which is just not a platform in the front end side, but it could also speak to the various systems uh, in the back end perspective, like uh, accountings or payment or social media that can provide. Uh, a complete comprehensive citizen engagement platform. And uh, these are the features that are normally expected. Uh, this is what uh, the uh, participants have communicated now. Uh, like we have a complete voting of 11 members out of 21 on a complete integration with the backend systems, uh, uh, like uh, other other systems like payments and those kind of things. So we, we have got the majority of the votings on this. So uh, let's wait for 10 more seconds. Uh, we have uh, we have last two options getting selected uh, at a higher level. Uh, one is a complete integration uh, system. And second one is on the local language support uh, and guided procedures. So, so that's where uh, I think we can conclude on this uh, uh, survey results. Uh, I think survey results are still pouring up. Uh, we are having last two options getting selected more and more again. Uh, so Ravi, I think uh, uh, I think we we have got the necessary inputs. Uh, yeah. Good good participation. Thanks a lot to the participants who have provided their inputs. Uh, Ravi will save the save this as a PDF platform into our file, and yeah. uh, uh, and thanks a lot for the participants who have provided all those inputs to us. Yeah. Uh, so Ravi Gupta sir, I think uh, let's move on to the next step. You can uh, proceed and provide uh, the vote of thanks. And we can conclude this session by after your vote of thanks. Thanks a lot for all the support. Sure. Uh, Sudhakarji, uh, first of all, I must uh, thank uh, you for the excellent session you uh, just now conducted, which was uh, very, very useful. And uh, it was great to uh, see uh, that lot of participation in the survey. Uh, which was online uh, and uh, and you, uh, you were doing it online and live and uh, the re responses uh, showed us uh, that there is a lot of need for uh, more uh, citizen engagement and a lot of uh, tools for citizen engagement have to be used uh, for that and uh, on behalf of elects uh, we would uh, like to uh, uh, give you a certificate of uh, being a speaker here uh, Sudhakar, uh, Thanks to you for joining us here. Uh, thank you. And uh, let us uh, also uh, compliment all our speakers uh, from, uh, who have joined earlier and uh, who have uh, given a uh, both a global uh, perspective on the citizen engagement and also a perspective on the Indian situation and the citizen engagement uh, scenario. And uh, today uh, we had. Uh, the various uh, uh, case studies and experiences were being uh, presented by the, our Indian uh, uh, smart city uh, CEOs and commissioners and smart city mission directors. So, uh, and uh, we also had uh, a case study uh, from uh, Australia in Christchurch, and we also had experiences of, from a few of the other countries being presented. So. Uh, uh, all in all, I think it uh, it uh, created a, a lot more awareness about the citizen engagement as an issue, and uh, also uh, the role of ERP system and uh, IT systems to make the citizen engagement much more faster and uh, much more meaningful. And uh, I would uh, like to uh, thank uh, SAP 
for uh, being a, a great uh, partner in uh, organizing this conference uh, 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 and uh, they have helped us in uh, bringing it a, a lot of good speakers and case studies uh, from outside India and also from India. And uh, uh, let me uh, thank all our audience uh, who are uh, watching us on the various social media channels from across the very smart cities and uh, jewel beach uh, in India. And uh, so smart cities and the city officials uh, have registered in a big way for today's uh, uh, seminar which we just had and I, I want to thank you and I want to request each of uh, each of one of you to uh, please uh, share this video uh, uh, which is live on the YouTube and Facebook uh, uh, or on the social media so that these experiences uh, reach to large uh, number of people and uh, so that citizen engagement uh, sector is uh, taken much more uh, seriously than it is uh, being taken now. Uh, may I request my colleague Arpit, who has been uh, leading this project, uh, Arpit, to uh, give uh, your comments in the conclusion. Arpit. Thank you, Dr. Gupta, and uh, all the panelists for the speakers. Uh, at the end, I would just like to conclude uh, by saying that uh, it was a very wonderful uh, uh, program today and all the sessions were very informative very interactive and uh, participation of international speakers as well as indian government speakers uh, we appreciate that they uh, took out time on their busy schedule and uh, came to this platform to share their views about the uh, importance of citizen engagement that cannot be ignored in uh, the current scenario uh, uh, in urban local bodies and uh, if we are uh, preparing uh, to build future cities then uh, uh, citizen engagement uh, is a final thing that is required to be implemented and with this uh, i would like to uh, thank all the delegates uh, those who are watching us live since morning all the speakers those who have joined us and uh, special thanks to sap for being our knowledge partner in this uh, future Cities virtual conclave, and the theme of the conclave was uh, uh, next generation uh, citizen engagement uh, program. Over to you, Dr. Ravi. Excellent. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Ravi, uh, just a few words from me before you conclude. Uh, yes, I, yes, I, yes. I yes. want to thank uh, the uh, all the panel uh, members, uh, uh, eminent panel members who have given a, a, a world of knowledge today for us, and uh, also to the international speakers. Uh, Kathleen, uh, Mike, and Rene, and also to all the SAP team who has supported this entire initiative, uh, starting from Rajiv Singh, uh, Mani Shekhar, uh, Mukesh Kumar, uh, Ravi Chaturvedi, uh, Sujit Pateja, uh, Mr. Tulsi, uh, Rahul Singh, uh, and his team, and also to the entire ELH team who has governed this in an excellent manner, uh, Dr. Ravi Gupta, uh, Arpit Gupta, uh, Anu Sharma, and other team members who are behind the show who has created this wonderful event uh, today. Thanks a lot to all the team members. Excellent, uh, Sudhakar. Uh, thank you. And I can like uh, see Sujit here. Uh, is he here? Like, I would be request to uh, say a few words. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Raviji. And, uh, you know, uh, thanks for uh, you know mentioning me. And I think excellent work let's team that you have done and i also want to thank uh, all the all the panelists and delegates from various smart and you know state mission directors uh, who find this uh, some of the inputs that they gave us were very 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 informative and uh, we feel that they will go a long way in helping create this uh, awareness amongst different uh, cities as to the the importance of uh, citizen experience and citizen engagement, I I would like to thank uh, the entire LED team and also uh, my extended SAP team uh, for making this great. Thank you so much. 
Excellent. So this this uh, we will uh, conclude this session, and uh, I will uh, thank all the speakers, including Sudhakar ji and, and Sujit here, and all other speakers who have spoken this is morning and all the audience. And with this, we will conclude this session. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Great work. Thanks. Thank you so much.